Good morning, I'm Darren Serretto with The Bridge, the TV show featuring happenings around the Woodbridge Township School District. In Woodbridge, the learning never ends. And in this episode, we're stepping outside the studio here at Avenel Middle School to see how learning continues throughout the summer. Now here's our lineup. Today I'm interviewing Supervisor Christina Vreeland, featuring a tour of the Summer Enrichment Program. Then we'll go over to Matthew Jago School to learn more about PACE with Mr. Patton. After that visit, we'll see what's going on in sports camps throughout the district and how our students prepare athletically in the summer. Finally, for our music segment, we'll return to Summer Enrichment for a very special performance. But before we get started on that exciting lineup, summer reading has been a tradition in Woodbridge for as long as I can remember. Let's find out what and where some of our friends from school are reading. This summer I am reading Captain Kids and I like it. This summer I am reading Squish. I like it because it's very funny. Hi, my name is Thomas. I get a port writing school number nine. And for my summer reading, I'm reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Ugly Truth. Hi, my name is Caitlin and I go to port writing school number nine. For my summer reading, I'm reading Jenny B. Jones' First Grader Boss of Lunch. Hi, this is Jane Steinberg from Woodbridge Middle School. This summer I'm reading The K with one of my students. Hi everybody, this is Jess Vitali and Maddie Vitali and... Charlotte Vitali. And we are summer reading. Charlotte, what are we reading? School without the school. Alright. Oh, you're back. That looked like so much fun, I couldn't help but start my own summer reading. I'm Darren Serretto and I'm reading Bill Bryson, A Short History of Nearly Everything. I've learned so much. Did you know that the water you drink today is the same water that dinosaurs drank millions of years ago? That's amazing. Well, we have to take a short break, but come right back to the bridge where the learning never ends. Welcome back to The Bridge. I'm Darren Serretto. As usual, we are featuring some beautiful student artwork. Now, in keeping with our summer theme, we're featuring artwork from Ashley Jay's summer enrichment class, Amazing Abstract Painting. In this class, students learn about one famous abstract artist each day and apply his or her style, characteristic, or compositional approach to create their own canvas acrylic painting. Students are learning surrealism, expressionalism, and cubism, among others and will create five original paintings by the end of the week. Here, I have a painting from first grader, Molly from Woodbine Avenue School, number 23, which she created after studying P.A. Mondrian, an artist who creates with primary colors. Molly did just such a beautiful job here. She's got all the colors, the primary colors, and it's an outdoor painting, perfect for outside here. It's gonna look great on her wall at home. And over here, we have Lydia. Lydia did a beautiful job making cubism in the background and she's got a musical note. I'll bet she's a musician uh, as well as an artist. Great job, guys. They tell me Miss J's classes fill up as soon as registration opens, and now I know why. Students are doing some really great work in her classes. Now remember, be creative and submit your own artwork through your art teacher. Your work could be featured on the next episode of The Bridge. Now a quick break, but come right back for my interview with Supervisor Christina Vreeland. Welcome back to The Bridge. I'm Darren Serretto here with Supervisor Christina Vreeland. Welcome, Christina. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. It's good to see you on this side of the camera. Yes, I try to get out every now and then from behind the camera. <laughs> oh, it's really great. Um, you are the hidden support beam of The Bridge. You know that, right? Well, thank you. It's really a team effort. We all do our part, and we appreciate you being our front man. Oh, thank you. We work well together. I'm, I'm so glad to work with you. Thank you. Uh, well, let's find out more about you. What's your role as uh, a supervisor at Woodbridge Township School District? Well, I supervise gifted and talented, mm -hmm. um, and also advanced placement programs okay. and music and dance. Oh, great. That's really... You wouldn't mind singing something for us, would you? Uh, I don't do that. <laughs> Just kidding, I would put you on the spot. Um, now, what do you like to do you know, when you're outside of work? What do you do at home? What are your hobbies? What do you enjoy? 
Well, I have three children mm -hmm. um, and a husband, and, and we're very busy, uh, mm -hmm. soccer mom uh, uh, okay. during the year, and okay. in the summer we like to travel. Just got okay. back from Myrtle Beach, where I finished my summer reading book. I know oh. you're talking about summer reading today. Yeah, what are you and, reading? Um, I actually took this book from my oldest son. Oh. It's called Catching Fire. It's the second book in the Hunger Games series, so right. I couldn't put it down. I had to finish it on the beach. Oh, was it good? Very good. Oh, very good. I'm one. ready for the third one. Oh, great. Now, aren't you in biking too? Do you like biking? I do like biking. I uh, got into biking a little bit and then um, started working with a fundraiser for the Hemophilia Federation of America. Oh, that's great. So, actually, in September, my husband and I do a three day bike ride. This will uh -huh. be our third year. Wow. And, um, that's so, awesome. you know, working with a charity and staying in shape, it's Very a lot of fun. Very impressive. That's great. I actually Thank got you. a book for you. I knew you were into biking. So, oh. it's since it's summer reading, it's uh, different trails you could take in New Jersey. Awesome. That's for you. Yeah. I am excited to explore this. This will be my next summer reading book. There you book. go. you got to keep going. Thank you. Great. Okay, so let's get into uh, some things that uh, you enjoy um, doing in Woodbridge Township School District. One of them is G&T. You're the supervisor. Can you tell us a little bit about G&T and um, an overview of the program? Sure. We have a variety of different programs. Mm -hmm. um, we have academic enrichment, mm -hmm. and that program runs kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay. Um, so students test into the program. We okay. do testing three times a year. Okay. They're recommended by anyone, really. Students, uh, mostly older students, will recommend themselves. Really? But also themselves? we get recommendations from teachers mm -hmm. and parents. Okay. We also have art programs, okay. um, visual art, mm -hmm. music, and creative writing and theater arts. Okay. And those programs run from third grade through eighth grade. Oh, so okay. they have a portfolio and performance assessments to enter those programs. Oh, uh, really exciting programs. They're all integrated with STEAM, um, which I know you've explored yes, on this did. program. Um, every year we mm -hmm. have an art show, which mm -hmm. is elementary and middle school together. We have that later in the spring. Okay. Um, our creative writing and theater Theater arts uh, classes have poetry readings, and then they also have stage performances. Oh, wow! Um, one of those stage performances is uh, coordinated with the music program. Our okay. elementary music and creative writing theater do their performance together. Oh, nice. um, so that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, a lot of students on stage. I'm so sure our my teachers love that. are really wonderful as far as coordinating that. Yeah. Um, and in middle school, we have a music concert as well. Oh, that's so, so neat. we really have a great time here at GNT. <laughs> You, you, they are busy, I'm telling you. That's great. You keep them going. Yeah, I mean, my job is approval. I, I just <laughs> sign my name, and really the teachers come up with great ideas. Sometimes yeah. the students have requests for things they like yes. to do. And, um, it, you know, we try to run with as much of it as we can. It takes a supervisor to let teachers do that. So that, you're doing a great job with that. Thank you. Excellent. Um, and I see some of your tweets uh, out there um, of, of the student work and the student trips, and I, it's just amazing to see that. They're we doing try to keep job. everybody informed yeah. about what's going on, you know, and that goes for not just GNT, but all mm -hmm. of our schools. There's so many sure. wonderful things going on, really and uh, sometimes the public doesn't get to hear about right. it. So that's one of the reasons we do the bridge. That's it. Um, and also Twitter, um, yes. websites, and all that just helps us uh, keep up with our information. Yeah. Keep the parents involved. That's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so let's switch gears. How about now music? Um, I hear we have a new K-5 to vocal music uh, right. curriculum coming in, yeah, is that right? Yeah, our uh, elementary general music program will be brand new this year. Nice. Um, the teachers have a textbook as reference, but okay. mostly um, they're moving in the classroom without the textbook for the oh, students. Wow, Very okay. interactive oh, uh, and all updated with okay. our standards, um, you know, cutting edge music curriculum. So that will be exciting. Um, now there's new benchmarks for each grade as well. Is that true? Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually something that even before we started working on the curriculum, um, the teachers started working together, you know, okay. voluntarily putting together um, assessments. We okay. focused on the end of each level, so mm -hmm. the end of elementary school, the end of middle school. And then with the new curriculum, we brought in um, benchmarks at the end of each I grade, gotcha. as right. well as assessments for every unit. So oh, we perfect. really have um, ways to keep track of how students are making sure. progress See in how music. Doing. Oh, that's wonderful. Great. Now, going along with music, we have dance as well, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and our dance classes really uh, fill up at the high yes, school I level. Hear that. That's where we offer dance at the high school level. That. We have dance one and dance two. Yes. Uh, some wonderful teachers there, That's and um, some students are really excited. Some of them taking dance for the first time, wow. and some of them who are more advanced. Um, okay. So it is really a comprehensive program. Okay, great. Now, you don't want to sing, I guess you don't want to dance either, right? 
Right, we should not do that. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep it to the students, that's good. All right, and then lastly, um, we have AP, Advanced Proficient um, Program. Can you uh, bring us up to date on the program? How's it going? Sure, we're doing great with advanced placement. I'm very pleased to report that our challenge over the last few years has mm -hmm. been to um, increase enrollment in advanced placement okay. programs but while also maintaining the scores that we've had. Oh, okay. And uh, that's really a challenge because as you're bringing in more and more students, um, you're not sure going right. into it if they're all going to be able to achieve the high scores that, sure. um, that we've seen in Woodbridge Township. But um, I'm very proud of our advanced placement teachers. I know all of the supervisors work with advanced placement teachers in their subject areas. Mm -hmm. And um, our teachers have been impressive um, in that they've welcomed um, a variety of new students into advanced placement programs okay. and they've also maintained those high scores that we're so proud of in Woodbridge oh, Township. Without a doubt and some students might be apprehensive they might be a little nervous of the challenge but it's good that you know the the supervisors and the teachers are on top of that and trying to draw those kids in and challenge themselves a little bit. Yes absolutely right. we're, we're proud of the success yeah. and, and the way that our teachers have handled uh, these changes over the last few years. Oh that's great well Christina thank you so much for all this information you have a wonderful job with uh, lots of responsibilities, but you're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank um, you. Now I hear there's a summer program going on here at Avenel. Can you t take us on a tour so we can see what's going on inside the yeah, classrooms? Yeah, absolutely. We already completed one week of summer enrichment okay. at Colonia Middle School. Okay. We did that early in July. Mm -hmm. um, we had a variety of classes there where we uh, we had sign language, we had crime scene investigation, oh, wow. we had some music classes, um, just a whole variety of classes there during week one of summer enrichment. Okay. Okay. And now um, we are kicking off week two. It's really going oh, well. Wow. So yes, I'd love to take you on a tour. That's the best way to see summer yeah, enrichment. I'm sorry I missed the first week, but maybe I can catch this one. We can see what's going on. Absolutely. Let's take a look. All right. Thanks, Christina. So we're here in the amazing abstract painting class with Miss J. And you can see they're doing some wonderful work here. I know Miss J is amazing. She's in our school, so we yeah. get to see it daily. She's great. We make sure that she's available when we're doing summer enrichment. So talented. That's yes, great. Yes, yes. What I really love about this class is the art history component. So, for example, today they're looking at cubism, they're looking at tinting and shading, and um, they study Pablo Picasso. So they learn about an artist and then they model their painting after some of the techniques that that artist uses. That is great. And they make it their own, but they still use uh, the amazing artists of the past. So in this class, uh, they use a game salad program oh. to create video games. So first they have to play video games to uh, get an idea of where they're going with this. And um, then they begin by developing their background and adding the activities in the game. Nice. No tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, different kind of salad? No, different kind of salad, I would say. Right. That's right. But they do have a lot of fun putting it together. Yeah, they're creating, uh, kind of like Minecraft. Uh, where they create their own world, their own games. Right, they create their own games, they can play each other's games, and they really have a great time here. Very creative. Okay, so we're here in the Rise of the Robots class. This Whoa. one is taught by Mr. Hoyer, and um, this is another class that fills up really quickly. Kids get to build robots, they control them on the computers, and they have contests. So they race them, they battle them, and um, and they have a tug of war this year, always adding something new. Um, so yeah, program programming and the sensors, that's great fun. Technology with Legos, can't uh, be I it. I know, and they're learning without even realizing it. Loving it, look at the smiles and the excitement. So we have our Ocean Science Wonders class here, Mr. Soretto. Does this class look familiar to you? It does, I'm so fortunate to be a part of this class. Ms. Steinberg and I are teaching this class. Um, we did many uh, ocean experiments, a lot of water, water experiments. We um, learned about beach safety and um, we used some crafts, it's like these fish they made, these movable fish. I see some water shoes on some kids here. What's going on later today? Uh, well, Ms. Steinberg came up with a great idea. She said, why not end the week with some water play, some actual outside water play. So the kids are excited, they're in gear. Yay, beautiful day, fun in the summer. I love those get wet activities. 
So, Mr. Serretto, this class is making parachutes. They have a uh, fairy tale character, in this case, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle who needs to be safe, so they're creating parachutes. Oh, that... very cool. So creative. Yeah, these guys have some great ideas using some engineering and uh, planning skills. STEM is such a big part of our, of our district's um, curriculum now. Right, I mean, you know, it's here, it's taught as a class, but it's really infused in everything we do. So this is a iMovie class. Ms. Cuevas teaches this class, and, uh, you know, we were talking about STEAM and art. Um, they're doing some creating with clay and putting them in uh, stop-motion videos, learning how to add the sound and manipulate the images. They look really neat. Yes, and I saw one of the videos and I, I, I'm so impressed because it's a way of teaching too. I saw this young lady was making a video of how to make a rainbow and she, and she, she put it all together in such a quick video, but it probably took a long time to do. What using a great art skill. Again, this is, would be STEAM, I guess, right? Getting the art. That's arts right, you then, have the technology. That's so cool. So let's take a look at some of the videos that they've created. Yes, I would love to see that. So this is our elementary school music class. Um, they're doing a musical production that they've learned in one week. Uh, Ms. Williams is their teacher, so let's see some of their rehearsal. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Go for it. Hey, what's going on in here? There's no kids in here. Is this summer enrichment? No, actually, one of the other things we do in the summer in Woodbridge mm -hmm. Township is curriculum development. Oh. This is actually a very interesting curriculum. Supervisors and teachers are working together. Okay. We should learn more about this. Yeah, let's check it out. So we're here with Mr. Bader, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this curriculum. How you doing, Mr. Bader? Mr. Stretto, always a pleasure to see you. My pleasure. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about this curriculum? What makes it special? Absolutely. Well, as Ms. Freeland uh, stated before, uh, we're really, really busy this summer. The learning never ends, and, uh, and this curriculum committee is certainly a, a fine example of that. Um, it is a special curriculum committee, and for the first time ever, 
we have been able to use our own in-district experts mm -hmm. to create our own curriculum from free digital resources. No books? Uh, no books. Wow. So uh, so the, the exciting part about this, and, and uh, once again, thank you to the Board of Education, Dr. Zega, for his leadership. Sure. Um, we were able to reallocate um, money for textbooks, for, for a new textbook series uh, for eighth grade math. And in that reallocation, we're, we're spending more money on our own teachers for curriculum development okay. um, and, and also being able to get every eighth grade a student an iPad for this coming school year. That's great. Yeah. So the, the course will be in iTunes. Uh, there will be uh, math lab activities. It will be very engaging. And, and, and most importantly, the students will have a, a greater opportunities using the, the device to get to the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy. So they'll be producing, creating ah. versus versus just remembering facts. So I really hope that it, it's gonna take learning and teaching to a new level. That's cutting edge. It, uh, yeah, I think so. So I'd like to uh, turn it over to our supervisor of mathematics, Mr. Bronsdorf. Mr. Bronsdorf, good to see you again. Hi, how are you? I remember seeing you in the studio. Yes, yes, not too long ago. Not too long ago. So tell us about what's going on here. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to be a part of this, mm -hmm. um, this digital curriculum, this iTunes U course uh, that uh, we're creating for grade eight math. I'm really happy about our team. Mm -hmm. our, our team, our curriculum team here is represented. Uh, we have teachers uh, from every single middle school. Okay. And uh, I, what I love about this is we're using free resources and their creativity to um, develop this curriculum. So, that's great. Yeah, I mean, you I'm, can't beat I'm, that. I'm excited. I'm excited. No books, all digital. Yes, yes. And that's yep. the way we're going. Right? And 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 again, what I was saying was they get to they're using free resources to uh, be creative and. You know, they're intertwining um, project-based activities, okay. and they're just uh, videos wow, to support great. learning at home. I mean, it's and what I love about it is that it's very easy to um, to, to, access to well to access, but also to be able to revise and make revisions year to year sense. rather than waiting many years to right. adopt a new curriculum. This is something that could be revised. You know, keep it up to date. Yeah, yes, you don't have to worry about current, looking for current. new curriculums. And, you can just add things. Yeah, and, and you know what? Today, students are comfortable with technology. Well, right. they should be using it. That's great. Oh, um, thanks for all the information. Yeah, well, I'd like to introduce um, our chairperson okay. um, uh, of the committee, uh, okay. works at Avenel Middle School, and that's okay. Lon Freeland. Oh, Here you go, Lon. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Vreeland, good to see you. Hello, how are you? Do you know Mrs. Vreeland? I do indeed. <laughs> Great to have you. Because can you tell us a little bit about how's it been going? I think it's been going really well. I think the committee has been working on um, each unit mm -hmm. systematically, right. making sure that um, the standards are aligned with the NJSLS. Good. Good. Um, kind of a little bit moving from the Common Core, but mm -hmm. keeping that all blended together. Okay. Uh, the other important thing I think is the team is adding their best practices, what they do in the classroom every single day, and okay. integrating it into this new curriculum, that's which important. I think is yeah. really, really important. So now right. everything is going to be centralized. Oh, um, so instead of pulling from multiple multiple curriculums and different books. Right. Everything is going to be in a one-stop shop, so to speak, for both right. teacher, parent, and student. Oh, that makes it so easy for everybody to access and to use. Absolutely. Uh, and we're going to have um, from online presentations mm -hmm. to interactive digital activities for the students to utilize. Oh, um, it's going to be very um, informative mm -hmm. and interactive um, for both student and I think it's going to make math alive. Yeah. Uh, the really students are really going to be interested Absolutely. in it. Absolutely. We're going to have uh, labs where um, um, students will be able to work on projects related specifically to what they've learned, okay. uh, and we're going to be rolling them out throughout the district, so it'll That's be fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much well, for that Well, I definitely want to introduce uh, the gentleman who's going One to more. be uploading everything into iTunes U. He's uh, going to explain uh, a little bit more about that, Mr. Joe crucial. Vitelli. Okay. Well, I hey, get to, uh, how you doing, Joe? Good. Good to see you. Wow, so I you're crucial to, in this. Like, well, uh, crucially, I, I'm getting data off the entry. Ground. You definitely don't want me teaching math because <laughs> I have a social studies background. But uh, That's okay. No, the, everybody here, you know, is is a pioneer. You know, we're taking yeah. first steps in putting uh, a curriculum in a digital format okay. for teachers and students to be able to access pretty much anywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and it's something that eventually we're going to be able to crowdsource it. We're going to okay. be able to talk to other teachers and sure. say, hey, if you're doing an activity on you know, slope and intercept, and it's really great. Right. Share that with us so we can sure. get it out to the other middle schools and start oh, to great. make this a very collaborative event. Right. Um, so we can send it out wherever you need to, whoever yeah. needs it. Yeah, and what's really good is that, you know, the, the sharing and collaborating that's gone on in the mm -hmm. room has been beneficial to the growth of the overall curriculum itself. Sure. So, sure. Um, you know, my job, again, is just 
data entry and combing through yeah. everything and making sure it's able to be found later. Yeah. Um, but you know, the math people are really taking a, a leap here in yeah. building all of this on their own. Well, so. they look very busy, and I appreciate all your information. Yes. Thank you so much. No problem. Sir. All right. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Wow. Who knew that there was so much fun and learning going on this summer? What a great program. Thanks for the tour, Christina. Keep up the great work, everyone, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks for coming back to the bridge. Well, a long-standing summer program in Woodbridge Township has been PACE. It takes place over at Matthew Jago School with Mr. Bob Patton, and we're about to head over there to learn more about it. Join us. I'm uh, Robert Patton, director of the PACE program for the Woodbridge Township Board of Education. The PACE program is uh, an extended school year for all special education children who have it indicated in their IEP that they will need additional help during the summer. The purpose of the program is for the students to maintain not only their academic skills, but their social and emotional growth. Um, it's a wonderful program and it was began 51 years ago by uh, Matthew Jago and Albina D'Alessio, who were in leadership roles in the district at that point. They realized that during the summer there was a lot of academic regression taking place with special education children and they needed to provide a program for them so the kids wouldn't lose their skills during the summer. They developed a program that was called Camp Pace and it was more of a recreational program but it kept children in the structure of schooling and it kept them in a routine that was very beneficial to them as, they, as school approached, the opening of the new school year approached. The student's program at PACE is dictated by their IEP, and their IEP is their individual educational plan. And in the plan, uh, the parents and the child study team and the teacher uh, create goals for each student for the course of the school year. It's our job in the PACE program to make sure that the students maintain what they've learned during the, the school year in relationship to what those goals are. So those goals are academic, they're reading and math and, and other disciplines. They're also speech, they're also occupational therapy and physical therapy. So there's a broad range of skills that we work on during the summer. We have, um, we have classroom teachers, we have reading specialists, we have technology people. We have writing specialists. We have all different people that work with the kids to make sure that they're receiving exposure to all the things they've learned during the course of the year. It's only a 24-day program, so it's, uh, it's like organizing a whole school uh, just for 24 days. And when we organize a program, and it takes several weeks during the spring to do that, we have to make sure that we're addressing all the children's requirements in their IEPs, whether they have speech or occupational therapy or physical therapy, or they have uh, FM systems in their classrooms. And we have to make sure that all the, all the programs and all the uh, things that are in their IEP are addressed in the summer program for the 24 days. So that's, that's a bit challenging, but we have a large staff and we work hard to make sure that that's accomplished. Over the years, the program has changed quite a bit. Uh, it went from approximately 100, 150 students to over 450 students at this point. We have uh, many, many disabilities, and we um, we give them the, we extend their their school year in the sense that we give them the same activities and programs that they receive all during the school year. The focus is on maintaining their skills and providing them with activities that will help them grow and emotionally and socially. The program now um, is called PACE, not Camp PACE, because there is a large academic component and it is IEP driven. And what the teachers do is they create uh, lessons meeting the needs, the academic needs of the students, and the lessons are created around weekly themes that uh, we create in the program. One of the new additions to the program is the incorporation of the RISE program into the PACE uh, program. The RISE program is a program basically that um, introduces older children to the world of work. And as indicated in their IEP, they work at the RISE building, which is now located at the old Port Reading Library. And they work with a staff there, and they do uh, are they are job coach. They go out into different local business establishments, and they work 
during the course of the day to experience skills and to experience the skill actually of working. Uh, we continue that during the summer. We have a group of students over there that do go over there, go over to Marshalls in Woodbridge and they do work several times a week and that program's continued throughout the summer. And when they're not at Marshalls, they're, they're learning how to balance their checking accounts and account money. The, the kids are very excited with the program and we, we know that by the high attendance rate that we have. Every day is a new adventure and every day there are more activities and more things for the kids to experience. So unless they're going on vacation, uh, kids are generally here for most of the program. I believe that uh, you know, from the input I get from the parents and from the kids is that they really don't want it to end. They uh, consider Matthew Jago School as their home. They've all, at some point in their career, have come to school here. And it's nice for them to come home during the summer and to, to meet the staff that they've become so familiar with. The most wonderful part of this program is that you couldn't work here, you couldn't be here as a teacher or a staff member if you didn't actually love what you were doing. The staff is totally involved with the kids. These are kids that you can't help but be totally involved with. And they're a joy every single day. Um, they're a joy for me. Uh, and and um, there are a few tears on the last day of the program uh, when the kids leave because it's just a very tight-knit, close, wonderful program. And we're so fortunate that the Woodbridge Board of Education, the superintendent, the director of special services, and everyone in central administration has contributed in some way to helping this program stay active. We also have a very, very, very active parents group. The parents group has become very active, provide us with a lot of extra frills in the program that we wouldn't be able to afford and they work uh, all year to fundraise for our annual carnival and to buy the kids t-shirts and to make sure that we have the programs and the ability to do some really special things with our kids. So it's, it, it is a community effort and there are, there are just so many people from the professional staff to the parents to former students and community, the community, the firemen, the policemen, they all come here, the ambulance uh, personnel, they all come here uh, to share information with the kids and give the kids experiences that they normally wouldn't have. As director of the program for 27 years, I have a lot of uh, my own personal life invested in this program and it's just amazing to see uh, the children come back every summer and it's, it, they're like coming home when they come back to the building. And it's amazing for me and gratifying for me to see how much they've grown during the year and how much more they can accomplish and how much more they know and how much they are excited about being back in this program. Um, the program, I believe, has left a left, uh, lasting mark on the kids and, and I think the staff, too. Uh, it, it's a very unique program and it, it, it's a program that touches so many lives that uh, we're very fortunate to have it in Woodbridge Township. Awesome! PACE is a really special and important program and I'm so glad we were able to learn all about it firsthand. Well, we have to take a quick break, but come right back for summer sports. Thanks for coming back to the bridge. It's time now for our sports segment and we have athletic supervisor Ron Weisenstein. How you doing, Ron? Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Pleasure to be here. Center court. Love being here in front of the spotlight, all the fans. Love it. So let me start. Um, it's summertime, but what are your responsibilities as athletic supervisor during the school year? Uh, during the school year, other than being in charge of athletics, I also handle nursing, art, and phys ed for the district. Oh, okay, great. And uh, so now what are your, um, I'm going to get a little personal, what are your uh, hobbies or sports that you like to play personally? Uh, personally, I, uh, I love to play basketball, okay. I love to uh, exercise, I run, Great. Uh, I get to the gym and do some weights, Great. Um, I like to go walking, uh, so I like to stay active. Perfect. Everything we'd want an athletic supervisor to do. Yeah, yeah, I try to play the part. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, so let me ask you, now it's summertime, how are the athletes staying active in the summertime? 
Well, uh, we're very fortunate that we have a lot of uh, very active coaches who uh, have sports camps throughout the summer that are run through the Re Woodbridge Rec Department. Okay. And what's good about that is that uh, because there's really no leagues going on per se that usually go on during the year because mm -hmm. people are on vacation sure, or away, sure. uh, it gives the uh, kids a chance to join uh, various sports okay. and be involved with the coaches that they may very well see oh. when they get into high school. We have tennis, baseball, basketball, track, right. uh, football. We have all kinds of different camps. Oh, that's great. So it keeps them sharp, keeps them active. And that's important to meet their coach so that they know, you know what to expect when they get to Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it gives them a taste of, uh, you know, what life would be like uh, yeah. eventually when they really go out for the sport competitively. Right. It gets them off the iPads and oh, the yeah. TV. Yeah, and all that's that what we too, try right? to do in this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> get them out and running. Yeah. Good, good. Um, so you told me what sports are going on, but um, as we get closer to the school year, um, you know, what are we, what are we asking the student athletes to be doing at this time? Uh, it's very important that they make sure they get a sports physical okay. before the school year starts, which will cover them for the entire school year. Okay. Now, sometimes a lot of parents aren't sure if they should get one because they don't know if their son or daughter is going to play sports. Right. But we encourage them to do so. And we actually offer free physicals oh. for anybody who may have some insurance issues. That's great. Uh, or they got a physical recently, okay. but they need another one for sports. Okay. Uh, and we send them to uh, First Health on okay. Parsonage Road in Edison. Okay. They could call ahead of time or they could just show okay. up, give them their name, and then uh, we pay for it. That's great. So yeah. it's free, no charge. That's no charge. It's, uh, it's great for the middle school kids. Great. I'm going to go there right after this interview, I think. It's, <laughs> get set up. Oh, that's great. So anything else? Anything else you want to tell us about sports or uh, outlook for the, for the teams coming uh, up? What's um, very encouraging is that we, we have a lot of new sports facilities out there. We have new softball field at Colonia right. uh, Middle School. We have a new yeah. softball field at Kennedy High School. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of turf fields throughout the district. Okay. Uh, it's great uh, what the mayor has done to help us upgrade our yes. facilities because our sports programs are very popular. Yes and there's just many kids involved and it's just great that uh, the facilities are matching uh, the popularity. They really are. Yes. And the mayor loves sports, we know. Oh yeah, so, uh, he's always out there. I see yeah. him at the games all the time. Yeah. He announces games. It's, yeah. it's just a great partnership that we have. It is a great friendship yes. between the two of them. Yes. I'm so glad. Well, Ron, thank you so much for coming today. Pleasure being here, anytime. Yeah, I hope to talk to you again soon. Good great. luck with all the sports teams. Thank you. Great. Now we have to take a quick break, but come right back for a very special summer enrichment musical performance. So we're back with The Bridge, and I'm here with Mr. Compatello and his Guitar Hero class at Summer Enrichment. How you doing, Anthony? How you doing, Mr. Soretto? How you been? Good to see you. Very nice to see you. Now, you know, you used to be in first grade in my class years and years ago. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Now, I always knew you had a, a, a great feel for music back then, so you pretty much enjoy playing lots of instruments. Oh, or... yes. Yes, definitely a big passion of mine since elementary school and very thrilled to be back in the Woodbridge School District now teaching music. Yeah. And theater too, right? And theater, yep. Oh, that's awesome. So we're here in Summer Enrichment and we have a wonderful group of kids here. Um, now these students are, are learning guitar. What kind of experience do they have coming into this class? All of them have little to no experience. I have two students who are at Avenel Middle School and they had a little bit of guitar, but that's about it, right? Ray, anyone had any guitar experience? Nope. No, so Nothing. they're pretty basic pretty coming basic. in on the first day. Um, now, what have you been working on this week with them? We did a couple different things. We took um, the aspect of guitar. We went all the way to the basics, how to hold a guitar, how to hold a pick. Okay. We even went to the science of sound. How is sound created? Why is sound created? We dissected an electric guitar. We talked about the bass. We talked about how everything is made. Okay. And then, of course, we did some performing, too. You did some performing. And we talked about what, you know, what makes music music. Okay. Great. So now you guys, um, you think you'll be continuing guitar after this class? Yes. yes. Yeah, definitely. Good. And, and if you play something later, I want you to remember, don't fret. Get it? Does anybody know what a fret is? Oh, they don't know what a fret is. You want to tell them what a fret is? <laughs> guys, what's a fret? Had the boxes on the guitar. <laughs> there we go. It also means yeah. don't worry. You'll yeah, be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So. Um, well, it's been a pleasure um, meeting all of you guys, and of course to see you again, Anthony, yes, is, is a pleasure for me. And um, I'm eager to hear what, you've, what your kids have learned this week. So will you guys play something for us? Yes. yes. Oh, that'd be awesome. Fantastic. Yep, we're going to play Eleanor Rigby for you guys by oh, the Beatles. the Beatles. I love it. My favorite. Can't go wrong with the Beatles. Oh, thank you, Anthony. It's going to be great.
wow, that was great, guys. Awesome playing. Nothing caps off the summer like the Beatles. I wish you the best of luck in the new school year and enjoy the rest of your summer. And thank you to Mr. C for teaching him all that. And thank you for watching The Bridge in Woodbridge Township where the learning never ends. Now, get back to that summer reading. I'm Darren Serretto signing off and looking forward to a great school year and the next episode of The Bridge. Join us next time.